just well, congratulations on winning it again. Um, key month for you, defining month for you. Do you feel? And what was your favourite moment and win in January? Well, obviously after the the World Cup break, um, you have certain questions. You know how is the team is going to react? Are we ready? Have we lost uh, that momentum? I don't think we did. I think we. We used that time really, really well, and um, we were lucky as well not to have some some big problems in in that period. And the team responded, playing and, and winning a lot of games, and uh, and one of the best moments. Uh, difficult to choose because we have some some big moments, but obviously, the the game that we won um, away at the Spurs that was a, a key one. Not United. Both of them is is difficult to know. I don't know. Okay, uh, Sam. Mikhail, do you understand maybe why some fans were initially a bit uneasy about Jorginho coming because of his Chelsea connection and Willian not working out and David Luiz working out to a degree but not maybe as high as people thought? Do you understand that Chelsea unease? Yeah, I think every time you sign a player, you generate some debate. Maybe they don't have the experience, maybe they are too young, maybe he's not that well known or whatever. We have some criteria we do a lot of work behind the scene to try to understand exactly the profile that when it and this is football and unfortunately you don't get it always right but uh, we put all the work intentions um, to make it work and my confidence and that one would be good Tom, I'm just asked about not maybe getting the top targets you obviously didn't spend the amount of money that you were perhaps willing to spend based on some of the offers you made does that mean you've got loads of cash Saved up for this <laughs> <laughs> That's a question for the owner. I don't think it works like that. <laughs> so, uh, and and we need to to maintain the the discipline and um, and respect what we believe is is right and and what we can afford and how we can keep evolving the squad. We have putting ourselves into difficult positions. Mark, you signed three, but you've also let three go out on loan. Are you happy with the size of the squad? You yeah, no. have. I am happy because we. I think we have added versatility, quality, and leadership in in the squad. And um, and now we have to prove it. You know, and now we have to give those players as well the chance to to get a, a different edge to the team and give us more options and and have more capacity to to change games, more capacity to rotate the squad because it's going to be needed. And um, that's something that we have to prove now. I'm on tomorrow's game, and your record of this in the last few years isn't good. I mean, it's obviously going to be a bare pit again tomorrow. I mean, how do the players, they haven't coped with it in the past, are you more confident that they will be able to cope with that this time? I am hopeful that we're going to do it, but again, we have to show that tomorrow. It's something we haven't done in the last few years. We have lost games in in situation and action that um, is not good enough and tomorrow we're going to have to play at really high level to earn the right to win the game, that's for sure. Mike? Mikel, you've hardly dropped any points all season but two of them were at Southampton, the bottom club. Uh, games against teams down the bottom in their own way almost more difficult than when you're playing Man United or Newcastle or Man City towards the top end? Um, every game in this league is extremely difficult. Southampton <coughs> asked us some questions. The game had moments where um, we were in our best and we had the chances as well to win it, that's for sure. And, and we didn't. Uh, tomorrow Everton is going to ask different questions to Manchester United, but it will be, for sure, difficult questions to answer. As a former Everton player, would it be nice to go back and actually take some points off them? This time, because as Mark said, your record of Goodison is not great. As an, as an ex Everton, as I said before, after tomorrow, I wish them from the bottom of my heart all the very best, especially with, with the moment that they are living in. But after tomorrow. Okay, we did the last couple now. Um, Nick? Hi, Mikael. Um, there's a lot of unrest around Everton at the moment, as we know, in my fan base and stuff. It's only a couple of years since there was here. I mean, I, I remember there was the game against Everton at home behind closed doors when there was a lot of fans protesting outside. Is what's happened at Arsenal since then a good example to a club like Everton or anyone in terms of how to turn a club around and how to turn that feeling around? Well, I don't know. Uh, we have at the moment um, a very stable and um, and energised atmosphere around the club and we want to maintain that and, and it takes a lot to build it and very little to lose it. So the most important thing is that we play well and, and we win football matches and, and we'll be fine. I know that tomorrow the only thing that matters to you is Arsenal, but it, it must hurt you personally to, to see Everton in the position they're in, in the situation they're in as well. 
Uh, especially because uh, the years that I had there, the gratitude that I feel towards the club, the love that I feel towards the club. And, um, and I hope that they can turn this around in the best possible way because everybody that has feelings for Everton are unique and very special and, uh, and they deserve the best. Finally done. And um, Mikel, um, we've reached a point now with Everton where lots of fans don't feel like it matters who the manager is because there's so much, so many issues above the manager. Obviously, there's been some changes since you were manager in terms of the hierarchy at Arsenal, but it feels very stable now. Can you just explain like, how actually having a stable hierarchy actually impacts you on a day-to-day -day basis and how it makes your job easier? I think for, for any club, you know, when you have ownership, when you have directors, when you have the manager, players, staff all on board with the same direction, with the same purpose and, um, and really pushing in the same way and the same rhythm um, without having to be looking around, it's very powerful and the contrary is really damaging and, and really difficult to build on anything that you want to build on. Okay, thanks everyone. See you Thank soon. you. Cheers.